Now beyond chatbots, there are many different ways we can use artificial intelligence in education. So as we've, we've seen with artificial intelligence, there's many different branches and aspects, but there are also various applications we can apply these different technologies developed out of artificial intelligence research to education. Now, one of these is personalized learning. So this is again an area where chatbots are now improving things, but personalized learning has been around for a long time. Expert systems were one of the very first personalized learning processes. Again, similar to your, bot, uh, your um, Twine game, where you were, it was making various decisions and providing various feedback and response. And we can see that still in a lot of adaptive um, quizzes and things of that nature. Uh, again, some of you did that in your very first um, hybrid learning activity, whereby the system could respond in different ways, depending upon how it had been trained. Now, AI takes that to a much higher level, where we can incorporate much more complexity. And now with natural language processing and large language models, we don't have to train it just on some very specific things. We can use the generalizability of these large uh, language models to be able to allow the students to ask almost any question and to pursue any area of investigation. And essentially these um, chat GTP type tools uh, act as a personalized learning environment that can assist students with their learning as they have a conversation with the dialogue agent, which is what we call chat GTP. This leads us into intelligent tutoring systems, which generally have another layer whereby it builds a model of the student and has an understanding of the student's strengths and weaknesses. So the areas where it, the student has learnt things, and areas where it's struggling and having difficulties with things, and it then adapts the responses based upon what it understands about the student. Um, and we're starting to see these again be developed and create adaptive learning experiences. Um, whereby, say, if you're doing a whole lot of maths problems, if you start getting some wrong, it might then make the problems a little bit easier and allow you to um, practice at that level before, again, making them more complex and taking you further on your learning journey. So a whole range of new approaches to adaptive learning and intelligent tutors are being developed. This leads us into adaptive assessment whereby we can have these systems set up so that not every ch child has to be assessed in the same way. We've been very used to standardized assessment because it's easier and um, we think it gives us better understandings. But really, it's more about ranking and comparing students. That doesn't really assist students in their own learning. But having adaptive assessment that works out what are the best questions to ask students to really understand what they know and what they can do based upon the evidence that the system has can then provide much greater insight to the teacher and to the students on what they should do next in terms of advancing their learning. So very much taking a formative assessment model to try to focus on improving students' learning through assessment rather than just being a measure of students' performance for some other uh, purpose. Language learning, as we've discussed, is a big area of AI at the moment. Being able to translate automatically now um, means that students can practice uh, speaking and be able to hear the responses back from the computer or the computer can tell them whether or not they have pronounced words correctly or put them in the right context and syntax and so forth and analyze their grammar and their tonal structures and all of the rest to a far greater degree than has been possible in the past. So the use of AI tools in language learning has been a, a major focused area. There's also now around content creation where these tools have gotten to the stage where they can generate things themselves. As we're seeing with large language models, being able to generate text, um, write essays, write um, responses to uh, things like that nature creatively come up with poems. We also have um, large language model 
tools that can create artworks and we're just starting to see them be able to create video productions as well. So content creation is another huge area that is being developed through the use of AI. And then we have predictive analytics where we analyze all this data that we gain about students through their use of these technologies and assessment items and so forth. And by comparing it with a lot of data we have on previous students, we can then make, or well, the AI can look for patterns that indicate whether or not the student is likely to have difficulties, likely to drop out of a course, um, likely to struggle with new concepts based upon the data from previous experiences of students. Now, teachers build up this expertise themselves, but we build it up off interactions with a few hundred students. AI systems can be trained to learn from interactions with tens of thousands of students, if not millions of students over millions of interactions. So the accuracy and complexity of analysis that an AI system can use and bring to education can be much greater as a result. So there's sort of the, some of the broad categories. There are others and we'll discuss those in the tutorial. And so think about some that you can bring to our discussion. Now, generative text and large language models are the current um, trend happening in education. And they offer some specific ways of improving the learning process. So being able to support students is a big area whereby we can have virtual assistants. So like business managers have their personal assistants that do all the, the routine mundane work for them, we can now have an AI personal assistant that can do the same things. So we can say, I want a poem that has these ideas and these themes. I want it based on this poem by this famous poet that I've read and I want to incorporate um, the, this image of a, of a dog and have the poem make an emotional response in relation to that image. So our personal assistant can then go away and create the poem based upon those prompts and instructions that we've given it. It will then provide a poem or we might say create 20 poems and then we'll look at those and say, I like these three. Can you use those three as a model to improve upon that and make another 20 poems? And then we could look at those 20 poems and say, okay, I like this one, but I really want it to focus more on the facial expressions of the dog and how it's feeling lonely. Can you incorporate that into the poem? And it can then improve that and we, we can craft that. So using our own processes still in terms of our own creativity, but using the assistance of the AI in the writing process. Now we can then use it to provide feedback. So I can say, okay, here's my poem. What would famous poets think of my poem? Give me a critique based upon famous literary critique of poems. And it will then use all of the data that it has on poetry critique and all the millions of examples it has from that and look for the various patterns in your poem and compare it to all the patterns in existing poems that have been critiqued and then provide a nuanced and informed critique that you could then use or a student can then use to improve their own poem. Now as teachers we can of course use it to plan lessons and ways of improving student learning but we can also do it for individual students and personalize create a lesson plan to teach this student that's learning poetry to incorporate um, the concept of fear into their poem and some nuanced aspect of that aspect that we want to help them explore in more detail. And we can then use an AI system to look at how we can incorporate that concept into teaching about poetry. And again, it will look at patterns of all the teaching examples that have used that and create ideas and a lesson plan that could assist teachers. Of course, we can use it to analyze student work, just as a student can use it for critique. We can use it to analyze students' performance 
and provide an assessment against criteria as to how students' work can be improved and to make a fine-grained determination as to how well it has met various criteria and assist in the grading process. And then finally, teachers can use it for their own professional development and their own professional learning. If we're struggling to teach students about poetry and about the concept of fear in poetry, we can then use the AI to assist us in our own learning about that before we then use it to teach students. And we can do that either with our colleagues or individually and go through our own processes of learning with the assistance of AI. So there's a range of different ways that as an educator we can use AI, but there's additional ways that students can use it. In particular around their own study, um, often students like to study with their friends because they can ask questions of each other and um, discuss things. Now they can discuss those things with their AI virtual companions. Um, as we discussed, they can use it to assist them in their writing and have assistance with writing. They can assist, be assisted with their language learning and particularly if they're a non-English speaking um, speaker um, and having to learn in a new language context, it can be a great assistance in that respect. They can use it to assist in their own exam preparation, um, helping them create flashcards or asking them lots of possible exam questions that they can practice. And it can of course personalize their learning. So particularly over time, at the moment we're seeing large language models where we have to sort of ask the prompt um, and it's really only using those prompts. Personal assistants will have all the prompts we've ever asked and it will build up a nuanced understanding of what we want to learn and the way we best learn and the way we best respond to prompts and it will have a much better understanding of how to respond to us than the current models are which are very generic. So from all of this, do we have any evidence that AI is going to improve learning? Well, yes, there's lots of anecdotal evidence that these things should improve learning. Of course, we've used them in various contexts already, and we've seen improvements to learning. AI is simply extending various capabilities that we've already seen evidenced in other learning and teaching practices. But there have been some studies already done that have started to show some quite significant improvements in efficiency and time saving as a result of using AI systems in the learning context and indeed showing results of around a 35% improvement in productivity. Now that may not sound incredible amounts but the improvements that were achieved with the industrial revolution were only around about 25%. So that changed the world. Um, if we are seeing a sustained improvement of 35% in terms of productivity improvements as a result of AI systems and large language models, then that is a really significant improvement as a result. And so finally, we need to be thinking about the impact that AI is going to have on education. If these things come to pass, what is going to be the implications? Now, yes, we're seeing some immediate implications around cheating and things of that nature. But what is going to be the long term processes in education if everyone starts using these AI systems all the time for all of the things that we do? So there are various things that need to be considered around that. Ethics is certainly one. Um, but you need to think about some of the various applications around the use of chatbots, around expert systems, intelligent tutors, machine le learning, um, personalized learning systems and virtual learning systems like learning management systems with all of this additional data and being able to look for other patterns, we might be able to see whether or not the student should continue in a course after their first lesson. Um, we may be able to make really good accurate predictions based upon what grade a student should get in a course based upon how they answer questions in their very first lesson of course. Now, of course, we ethically that would be inappropriate to do, but if we can show a 99% chance of effectiveness and efficiency in that um, pattern analysis, then that can certainly help decide what to do with that student during a course. Um, we could decide to give them lots of more advanced material, or we just can decide to give them a lot more remedial material to help them try to improve upon 
where they're likely to be based on, upon that prediction. Um, but again, those predeterminations can be wrong, even though it might only be a 1% probability of being it wrong. If you happen to be misdiagnosed in that way, um, then that could have an impact upon how you're treated in an education context. Now it happens now, but um, with AI systems, it could happen a lot more. So these are some of the things that we need to think about as we look at the various educational applications as they're developed. And I've given you three example educational applications. Um, one is a video summary, which will summarize this video, for example. So it will take all the key concepts and summarize the key points so that you don't have to sit through and listen to all of this. You can just um, have an AI system summarize it and gain the key points from that. Um, AI art generation is becoming a quite a significant thing, not just for artists, but for um, creating, say, a presentation and creating nice graphics and material for a presentation that you want to make. And then how um, we can utilize AI for story generation, particularly for younger years, where we can use AI systems to generate stories with images and how that might be used, uh, particularly around personalization. If we know young child likes a certain uh, movie character, we can incorporate that very easily into their story. And for another child, and indeed for the 30 different children in our class, we can have 30 different stories, all based upon different things that will engage their, those children with their learning. So try out those applications and we'll discuss these in the tutorial.